here at Historic Tacoma. We have the Recreation Department selling bowls as a fundraiser. We have the Unsung Heroes. We have a number of nonprofit groups, including Cheer, including uh, Lunch and Learn, uh, and the PTAs. Uh, the list goes on. The empty bowls are done by the youth of Tacoma Park for um, the charity of the Cheer Foundation to feed the hungry. And that's why, that's why they're here. This is our annual chance to thank the donors who so generously provide the money that we give out to recognize the grantees, the people who are doing the work for the worthy causes. And also today we were talking and celebrating the unsung heroes who uh, are individually doing work, not necessarily with groups, but just contributing all the time to make Tacoma Park better. Traditionally, we give out the awards at the MLK evening celebration, but this year the weather messed with us. We had to postpone, and so we're doing it today. We are completely uh, high school and middle school run, and we try to involve children in helping those in need. So we have two programs, a literacy program and a crafting program. And so with literacy, we go to food distributions and we read to the underserved kids there. And then we also give them new books to take home. And then for crafting, we work with groups of children to make different things for hospitals and the homeless. I, I am really um, pleased and, and proud. I, this is such a wonderful community and I'm so glad that to be part of it, even though I don't live here, I work here, and I'm really uh, proud of this community and happy I can help. We get about 2,000 pounds of food for Cocoa Foods each weekend, and so far we have collected over 150,000 pounds of food and distributed it. So the first weekend goes to Tacoma Park Middle School. The second weekend we take it to Hampshire Tower Apartments, where we serve the elderly and um, families there and the third weekend is Rolling Terrace Elementary School which is Heidelin School and then the fourth and fifth weekends we distribute it to local area shelters such as Shepherd's Table. It's a really huge honor and we're very grateful. I'm part of the active community. I never I never thought about me getting an award. I always thinking about me working with the group to make this place a wonderful place for all of us. So it's kind of nice. It's kind of nice. Here in Tacoma Park, um, we, we do a lot for each other. Uh, that's what makes it a great place to live. Um, a lot of what we do isn't something that we champion in the, in, the, in the front. It's things we do in the background. There's ways that we support each other that we're not as prideful as to say, oh, look at me, I'm doing great stuff. You're doing great stuff in the, in the background, but you know it's, it's vital and you know it's important. And you know it's, it's those kinds of things that keep the community together. And so the Unsung Heroes Awards are really uh, connected to uh, MLK uh, in, that, in that celebration and also just to champion those people. The title I wear is community activist. My core values are justice, economical justice, social justice, and social cultural economic justice is what I, I focus. And community based is my approach. I think there is so much resource uh, in the community, experience, goodwill, purchasing power, investment power in the community. So if we talk to one another, if we work together, I think development can come to grassroots level. This is a wonderful event. The timing of it was great for me because it's been a tough month uh, with the government shutdown, but it's opened up and we got to celebrate all the people who got the Unsung Hero Awards and that was fun. and. Um, so, always great being here with my Tacoma family. What we need to do, as we come together to do big things, we also have to build human relationship one person at a time. It's an amazing feeling to be able to help others in need and just put a smile on someone's face. It's been a real pleasure being part of the Tacoma Park community. We're actually from Rockville and Lana goes to school at Blair and she went to Tacoma Park Middle School so we feel like this is like our adopted community and we love it here.
Last year, uh, Detective Sergeant Matthew Barber uh, was a spectator. Um, he didn't participate in the actual plunge, uh, but he, he, he said he was going to plunge this year, and he asked me to bring my RV. Um, he said, let's tailgate, you know, before the plunge. Uh, unfortunately, um, Sergeant Barber passed away in May of 2018. So we're, we're doing this in his honor. This is my third plunge. Um, so I'm a man of my word. I said I will, you know, the first year I did it, I said I would do it the second year, did it the second year. Last year I said I'd do it this year. So here I'm, I'm back again. I always give to Special Olympics every year, so I thought I'll do it as a team effort this year and, and try the plunge. That was before I broke my wrist, but I'm still going to do it. I'm, I'm only going to go up to my waist or so. I'm not going to go all the way under. And it's, and it's cold today, so I'll, I think it will be good enough. The first time what I remember is when you first get in, it's cold, and then you kind of go numb, and then it's not so bad, you don't really feel it. So we'll see, I will see how many people go all the way in this time. But you can't get ready for it. It's a shock, so you just have to go and prepare this year. Just do it. No, this is about the 11th time I've done this. So. I'm excited again. It's a little colder today with the wind, but uh, we'll make do. We'll make definitely make do. I make sure I have a lot of clothes when I get out. That's the most important thing. Don't go in with a lot of clothes, but when you come out, you better have a lot of clothes ready. But it's going to be a fun time. I tell you, I'm, I'm really excited. My second plunge. How was it the first one? Cold. And what do you expect of this one? Colder. <laughs> Well, he better have the towel open for you, so when you come out, he can just wrap you up and swatter you like a baby. Yeah, my arms do. <laughs> the weather's pretty good. It's a little windier this year, so it'll probably feel a little colder when you get out. Um, but at least it's nice and sunny, so at least it's not like last weekend when it was really cold. I was in the car, I was serious, I was like, oh my gosh, it's going to be cold. I'm just happy it's not as cold as Monday. That, I'm so happy it's not as cold as Monday. It's cold, but it's not as cold as Monday. <laughs> You not really can't prepare all. yourself. I, I don't. I don't think I was not going to take a cold shower. I was not going to do any of that craziness. I was just going to come out here and say, you know what? Forget it. I'm doing this for a good cause because my um my um nephew, he's um a special needs, and I love him to death. And I'm going to go in this water for them. Yeah, a lot of training. You know, I took a, a cold shower Yay. last night. I guess that's really the only training I've been doing, so I, you know, one, one training session. I think it should be good, though. I grew up in Pennsylvania, so we're kind of used to the cold, so I'm going to rely on that. Years of experience in the snow. One time at the movies in the winter, I locked myself out of my car, so I had to stay outside for a few hours. Um, it's stuff like that. What do you think? It's my first time. Second. I'm going to do it with shorts and a short sleeve shirt. That's how we roll. Got a veteran. It's the first time we're excited and we're doing this in honor of uh, Sergeant Barber. Uh, they said it's gonna water's gonna be about 35, but with the wind, it's gonna feel like in the 20s. So it's gonna be freezing. What do you think? I expect I'll hang out in the water for half hour, 45 minutes, have swim some laps back and forth, maybe go out to the bridge and back. Just depends. Uh, I haven't seen any sharks yet, so. It went, it went okay. It was really cold. I'm glad I didn't go get my head wet because <laughs> it was really, really, really cold. It was all right. It was cold. Definitely colder this year. Uh, the water felt colder. Went all the way under again, but uh, more people went under, so that was good. It was, you know what? It was a little warm this year. I'm a little, a little upset about it. Oh, it was cold. Yeah, that's. 
It was cold. <laughs> Did you like the plunge? Yeah. It was cold. It's cold. The problem cold. Is he left his, his clothes in somebody else's car and he doesn't know where they are. Yeah, that's a terrible strategy. Next year I'm going to not make that mistake. Or something? You know, I feel great, man. Once again, it's another year. We had a much larger crowd this year. Uh, you know, it's for a great cause. Um, it was extra cold, I can tell you that this year. But <laughs> Uh, it was, you know, like I say, for a great cause. It's near and dear to me. I have uh, family members that have disabilities that benefited from this program. So I'm just happy we got so many more people. We want more people next year. I'm encouraging everybody in Tacoma Park, all department heads, I'm challenging you to come out next year. We have the city manager out here, the deputy city manager. So let's get everybody in Tacoma Park to come out and support this great cause. It is a great cause, and it's fun to do it with the, with the police officers here. So really yep. good day. How are the guys? They, they kept the cast dry. It was cold, man. Um, third year in a row. <laughs> you know, a little cold. It's always for a noble cause. Um, this year was, was a little extra because we plunged for Sergeant Matt Barber. It's always good to <laughs> come out and support the Special Olympics. And uh, this year we were able to do it in Matt's honor. My art is mainly about culture in the Caribbean. I'm from the Caribbean, Trinidad. And so I, I'm, at this point, I'm doing a series of stuff that deals with dance and other cultural activities in the Caribbean. And I'm also interested in the, in the nature, the, you know, the vegetation. So I have the forest scenes and beach scene and stuff like that. These are several works that I worked on since 2016. Um, most of these are addressing um, life as an immigrant, but also what does it mean to belong, um, national identity, cultural identity, um, notions of home, um, and gender. Um, I illustrate my watercolor illustrations of uh, women, black women in fashion, um, and florals and a lot of metallics. My just like carefree, um, just pretty stuff of black women. So this is an installation um, that was originally created in 2015 um, and it features clothing and uh, undergarments and bed sheets, all donated textiles from uh, women. Um, so I reached out to family, friends and had them reach out to their uh, family and friends. Some of them from scratch, some of them from a photograph and some of them from memory. It's acrylic, it's mixed media so I will have acrylic, pastel, crayons, ink. Sometimes I use all of this in a piece. And sometimes I just use acrylics. There's one in here that's just pastel. Um, there are several techniques, so each piece is made with a different technique. This one behind you is um, a collaged image of my childhood home um, and my Urdu handwriting that I um, digitally scanned and printed onto chiffon to talk about the ephemerality of home as an immigrant and the delicacy of the idea of home. Um, some of the weavings are also um, calligraphy. I've woven paper maps and um, prayers together um, as yearnings, as letters to the divine. Um, some other works are videos. Um, behind you is a performance that I did in 2016 during the presidential election to talk about not only treatment of immigrants and refugees, but also um, as a practice for myself in endurance. So it's called Endure, but it's kind of me engaging with my role of not only being an artist, but also a protesting citizen, drawing attention to issues of social justice through my work, um, especially refugees and immigrants, especially the Muslim community, the immigrant community. It's watercolor and ink on watercolor paper, um, along with some metallic gouaches. Basically, in my studio, I took chicken wire and uh, wrapped and layered and stretched and weaved these donated textiles together. Um, and so 
from the strips of fabric and from the process of taking those strips of fabric and uh, weaving them into the chicken wire, it was sort of like weaving their stories together. Mostly I concentrate on the Caribbean, but then I use my technique is I incorporate everything. European art, Japanese, African, India, you know, South America, Caribbean, native culture, everything. And so I use a lot of patterns and that type of stuff in there. A lot of my work is inspired by social, political climates and um, larger events that um, affect personal and community narratives. So a lot of uh, my work is in response to the social and political climate, but also traced through, through a very personal experience of myself and my communities. I think art um, can be a powerful tool to raise awareness about issues of so social justice. And um, it's not just pretty things on a wall. I think a lot of times people forget that it can be a really powerful way to draw attention towards injustices in our society, and I hope my art does that. I think my favorite is probably like the sketching part, kind of get the ideas on the paper and then kind of refining them. And um, when it's finished, like when it get, it's, when it's finished and get the idea out and see how it kind of morphed and evolved from the original sketch. It took a long time. It was definitely a very labor-intensive process, but I really loved um, hearing all the stories um, from women as they gave me these clothings, um, these, uh, these donated clothing. Um, so there were some things that had a lot of personal meaning to people, a lot of sentimentality, uh, stories, specific stories. Um, some of the items were um, things that they were you know, received from a lover or got while they were traveling. And so there was all this m meaning kind of imbued in the fabric. And so what I wanted to do was take that meaning and put it all together um, into something bigger than the individual stories. Um, so the challenge was time, but I loved making this, this whole project. So it's 300 linear feet of chicken wire. Um, so this version actually is only about half of it because of the size of the space. Um, so yeah, that kind of gives you an idea, but um, it's super colorful and bright and I think it looks great here. That's great for the artists and it's great for the people. I find a lot of people, well, in some communities, a lot of people don't realize that art is so available. You know, when you tell them you have a show, they think it's you set enough for one evening and it's not going to stay and stuff like that. I would like to see some of that get improvement. And there's a lot of places that you could do that, that you that venues that you could see art. I think it's great that people get to meet um, the artists who made the work, but also have conversation about the work. I think the work stands for itself, but it's um, a totally different experience when you get to hear about it from another artist. And I love being around other artists who are in the, in the show as well. So um, I'm glad the community is able to come out and join us. Um, I think that's really cool. Just artists, uh, artist life is a lot of times really isolated. So I'm able to be able to meet people and actually see them enjoy your work is, is, is rewarding. Well, I think it's great that there are community centers that uh, focus on artists and that showcase art. Um, I think that's really important. Um, and in the context of women of the world, um, I love that this is here. Uh, being a woman and having asked women for these um, donated items, um, my hope is that women think about their, you know, where they came from, their histories, and, and the impact that they're leaving on the world. Um, so. The program is about playing competitive esports in the high school esports league. The purpose is to be able to give kids the opportunity to earn scholarships in esports. They seem to be enjoying it. They're loving the competitive aspect and being able to challenge themselves against tougher opponents. I heard about it and I saw the um, flyers around and I thought you know, I like Fortnite. I'm pretty good at it. And I thought it would be fun to like play with the team. I decided to participate because I thought it was a good opportunity to play like on a team 
and to connect with other people. I really like to play Fortnite and I think it's a really fun game and also because a bunch of my friends are signing up too so I decided to sign up too. Oh, I really like gaming and stuff so let's try this out and I just like Fortnite. Like I like playing Fortnite and like playing with my friends and stuff and like being, it's like another hobby. I decided to sign up because all my friends are here to play, so I just want to compete with them and play around, have fun. I'm, I know that I'm a god at Fortnite, I need a, a new computer for my setup. So far it's pretty good, um, we have a lot of fun here. We do icebreakers as well as sometimes we may write or fill out different um, agendas based on te technology type of careers, so the purpose is to try to get them to engage more about STEM. Well, Fortnite's like um, like a PvP type of game, and there's a hundred people. There's a battle bus, and there's like a map, and then just like everybody lands at some sort, some place on the map. You load up, you know, try to make it as far as you can. The building aspect of it is just I like it a lot. I think it's cool, and I just like because you can play squads, duos, solos, you can play whatever. It's just sometimes people can like afford stuff, so. They just have it like here, so they just like game and stuff. When we first walk in, like there's like a warm up, like just to like get each other, like just to get active for the day, and then he gives us a snack, and then like sometimes our stuff is already set up for us, and then like we log in, we start we, we start playing, we play we play like squads or creative or something like that to warm up, and then like at the end like we we just start we just start having fun. I believe that they really enjoy the Fridays um, when they have a competition. Um, they've been pretty responsive to the career activities that we've had. And um, I just feel like they're having a good time in the program. Yeah. Competitions usually go as um, they load into the same lobbies and try to see who can survive the longest. Those are usually against different schools around the country. So far we've played a Canadian team, a team in New Jersey. So. It's, it's going well. I think it's a cool idea that they let people like in middle school or high school or whatever just be able to like play in, as a team like for and then it actually helps like go towards our college scholarships and stuff. I think that's cool. I like the building aspect of it and I also like playing with everybody here. I like how it's competitive, how it's related to a bunch of other games. Like lots of people are making millions, thousands, probably hundreds a day and I think people are actually trying to be gamers because how, how much money they're making and how competitive and how other games are. You get better every game you play. Like every game is more competitive because people are getting better repeatedly like every day. Some people don't get the chance to play at home or they don't have an actual PC or a controller to play on. So they just come with their friends to play on uh, actual controllers or actual uh, good gaming uh, consoles to play on. I would recommend this program to my peers because it's fun. You get to know your friends better and you can, you can just brag about how good you are. A lot of people own video games, so a video game console is almost in every home. So I think that's what's making it popular. It's just that it's so normal. Um, I want them to game the same thing you would get from a traditional sport. The teamwork aspects, the aspects of getting to know each other better, um, learning about how to be a good teammate, learning about those type of things. The things you would learn is, is some, no different as if you were playing basketball on the basketball team.